시청자 여러분 안녕하세요. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is p r o s o n t i c s on Friday Night Live, which addresses different steps in p r o s o n t i c treatment, as well as the different side effects. It has been already three years since we. First aired in August 14th in 2020, and thanks to your love and support, we are now celebrating our third anniversary. We will do our best to provide with you meaningful information that will help in your clinical practice. We have prepared a very special lecture today. Let me introduce the speaker. This is Professor Lee Jun Seok of Dental College at d a n g u k University. Nice to meet you. Congratulations on your third anniversary. Thank you, and I am honored to be here as well. We are honored to have you all on our third anniversary of p r o s o n t i c s on Friday. I am very glad. This is the third lecture that you'll be providing on p r o s o n t i c s on Friday. I am interested as to what kind of details and contents you'll provide today. Can you share a glimpse into your lecture today? Today, I'm going to briefly go over how we adapt to denture. In the previous lecture, Professor Lee c h o n g h e has talked about clinical remounting fully, so I'm going to just to talk briefly about the clusal adjustment intraorally. Also, I'm going to talk about causes that lead to discomfort, as well as solutions. Thank you. After listening to you, I look forward to today's p r o s o n t i c s on Friday even more. Those of you watching from the dental site, you can participate real time via the chat. Leave your questions, have them answered, and you'll be able to try your chance at winning amazing prizes that have been prepared, celebrating the third anniversary. Those of you selected as the best question today will receive k y o c h o n Chicken Set. Are the people who are selected as best questions the only ones who receive gifts? No. We'll do a lucky draw amongst those who participate in the chat and send Starbucks coffee coupons. You need to log into dental site and then participate in the event via real chat. You need to agree to dental marketing terms to be able to win your prizes. I look forward to your keen interest and let us begin the p r o s o n t i c s on Friday, third anniversary special seminar. Greetings. I'm Professor Lee Jun Seok of p r o s o n t i c s Division at d a n g u k University Dental College. Today, I want to talk about adaptation adjustment and patient management for full denture cases. Today's title seems quite daunting, but this is something that you're already aware fully in your clinical practice. So I want to go over them briefly. Let's go over major points. And I would like to go through abbreviated versions. Let's talk about adaptation of denture. As we all know, denture adaptation should be done when the tissue is as much healed as possible. For older patients, we need to have the patient come in in the morning hours without the denture, and after recovery, we need to adapt to denture. The basic The purpose of a denture adaptation is as follows. First, there should be no pain when the patient puts it in or out, and there should be no pain when the patient bites. From dentist's perspective, there needs to be balanced contact. Third, when the patient opens mouth, there should be no gap in the denture. There should be no dislodgement of denture. We also need to make sure that the patient understands how to deal with and manage denture. Finally, we need to make sure the patient feels that this denture is nicely made. Therefore, adjusting the denture for a long time in front of the patient is not really a good idea. 
In a lot of cases, people take out the denture from a sealed packaging and start the adaptation. But before the patient comes, you need to take it out and do inspection ahead. That is my recommendation. Because of opening in the rugae or signs of extraction socket, there can be sharp nodules and spicules leading to pain. Also, this can affect the stability and retention. We need to make adjustments ahead. We also need to evaluate whether food impaction can occur easily in embrasure area or whether polishing has been done properly. We need to check if polishing is done on the inner surface. What is most important is to check where areas which require a lot of adjustment like bony bridge has become too thin. As shown on the right, the border molding marginal thickness, once it comes out as denture base, perhaps it can become too artificially thin. We need to check that. In the case of labial flange, at times it can be fabricated too thick. In that case, the patient can experience aesthetic discomforts, so we need to be aware of that. If it's too thick and if a patient finds it uncomfortable, then we need to adjust such thickness ahead. With patient present, if you start to adjust the denture for a significant period of time, the patient may doubt whether the denture has many problems, so we need to address that carefully. Once the patient comes in, you need to check the air on the inner surface. After that, you check the retention and stability, do a cruiser adjustment, and do patient training. The materials used for inspecting and evaluating the denture inner surface are as shown, silicone, PIP, and indelible pencil. You can use whichever one, but as for PIP, personally speaking, it takes a long time to apply and it's quite sensitive, so I don't really use it. In the case of fit checker or other silicone options, there are such characteristics. No matter how thin you apply in the inner surface of the denture, in the case of the upper, the medium becomes unable to get out, and in the case of lower, if you apply even the slightest force, everything goes out, so it becomes too thin. As shown on the left, when you use silicone, as for the upper, it becomes too thick, so it is difficult to check whether where it is in contact, and as for the lower, if you apply slightest force, then everything will be in contact, so this will be difficult to adjust as well. The impression materials that are available are very precise, so you need to compare using the impression material and check the margins. If the patient complains of pain in certain areas, or feels compression, you can focus on that as you make adjustments. As seen on this image, in the area where compression occurred upon impression taking, we need to check whether this occurs again. And this can be quite clinically useful. Another important point is that if you find that there's an issue in inserting and removing a denture, then you need to see if there's bilateral tissue undercut or ridge that obstructs insertion or removal. We need to tell this to the patient ahead. When you try to check and put it in and out, the patient can go through extreme pain. In this process, there can be bleeding as well. If you use disclosing medium and if you tell the patient to raise her hands if they feel any sort of pain, you can put it in and once the patient raises hand, you can remove it. And as shown in the image on the lower right, you can check where there's contact. You can reduce the margin or provide relief. We need to make sure that adjustments are made so that there's no pain when the patient inserts or removes the denture. Next, we need to evaluate retention and stability. 
I'm sure you're all aware, aware of how to do retention and stability checks. So I'm not going to go on long. What is most important is that you need to do such evaluation before occlusal force is applied. You need to look at the following and do inspection of retention and evaluate stability. In the case of upper, across the occlusal surface, so when you press it, it should not become dislodged. If you shake the middle part horizontally, it needs to move less than 2 millimeters. If, if you press it like this, if the denture falls off easily, then stability is lacking and this would be difficult to use. In order to solve this problem, we can use modeling compound to increase the thickness of the buccal margin. The sound does not come out right now. When we press it, and if there's no shaking left and right, then in this area, as shown in the upper right, rather than pouring model, you use putty to fabricate model, and then remove modeling compound. Once this is done, there is a empty space generated. You can use brush and technique to increase the thickness of margin. You can increase stability and in the same way, in the same way, if you think that retention of posterior dam is lacking when you take impression, just like forming posterior palatal seal once again, you use the modeling compound intraorally and in a similar way you form resin and form dam. What you need to remember here is that at times you use resin directly in the oral cavity. However, because of the characteristic of resin, it's very difficult to increase the retention. I prefer using modeling compound and in the case of lower, if the patient has a retruded tongue, then you cannot really expect the retention and stability in the lower. You need to train patient once again and reposition tongue position. At times, the patient may deny that they have retreated tongue. And this is quite frequent. When the tongue is positioned in the lower anterior area, when you check the retention, you need to examine the sound and the tongue movement that flips backwards. Once these are checked, you can motivate the patient with these information and reposition the tongue position. Or you can form a notch on the lingual side of the lower anterior to guide the tongue forward. By doing this, you can inspect the inner surface retention and stability, and now we need to move on to occlusal adjustment. As Professor Lee Chung has mentioned on clinical remounting, and he has done a thorough job on it. Realistically speaking, as a private practitioner, at times you have to do intraoral adjustment. And I'd like to give you some tips on this end. Intraoral occlusal adjustment. This is not possible if there is deviation between CR and MIC anteroposteriorly. In wax denture, you need to do CR verification. And once a CR is expressed in CO, we can do this. Small deviations can be adjusted intraorally, but as shown on right, I use my hands to utilize my tactile senses and visually you need to evaluate where the denture moves. What I utilize here is the feedback the patient gets. Articulating paper as shown on this image, marking may not be done properly and 
and soft tissue area, this is not accurate. So we use it as a supplemental measure. I will talk briefly about intraoral occlusal adjustment. Balanced occlusion should be established in a centric relation. The patient should practice opening and closing mouth. Once light mastication is done, you need to check whether there is any shifting of the denture. Once the practice of opening and closing is done nicely, you ask the patient to close the mouth using molars. You repeat the process and you ask the patient where it is more in contact. You ask whether there's more contact on the right side or on the front side, left side. You ask questions like this and receive feedback from the patient. You check the articulating paper in line with the response. And if you think that the denture movement is similar, then you adjust that area. You do not adjust the areas where it's vague. Once you repeat such practice, the patient will be able to close using molars once the series of practice is done, the patient may answer that there is balanced contact on both sides. We provide wide freedom here, and this has been addressed in Professor Yi Chang Yi's lecture. Following the bull principle, we ask the patient to chew. Among the area where there is contact, I primarily make adjustments in areas with guiding cuts. As shown on the image in the middle, there is a strong contact in the lingual facet. In general, the occlusal surface is convex. We need to provide a wide freedom and this needs to be concave. I at times use acrylic ver, but I at times use a wheel type tool to do occlusal adjustment. Once there is balanced occlusal contact in the area where there is central fossa, the centric occlusion area is marked in black. When you have the patient to chew, then the red bits are marked. I try to adjust it and make it more smooth to secure stability. By doing this, in doing occlusal adjustment, you can do it intraorally without causing pain to the patient and affecting stability. Can I ask you a question in the middle? Yes. So you've shown you how it was done in the upper. If you press in the pellet, the midline is very hard, and in the posterior area, there is a lot of soft tissue in some patients. At times, although the denture should provide stability, there can be seesaw effect or bending effect. In these patients, what kind of actions should we take? What kind of options do we have? This is not something that occurs very frequently, but at times there can be fracture in the midline area, so this can be very critical. In the case of patients with accentuated median palatine raphe, we need to alleviate it and reduce the seesaw effect. This is important. If the antagonist is an implant or natural tooth leading to strong force application, these can be accentuated. So the use of metal frame denture is recommended. If you need to use resin, you need to discuss this with a lab technician ahead so that you can form more thickly and as you provide relief, it's going to get thinner. We need to prevent it becoming too thin, so you need to make it thicker from the beginning. In anticipation of relief, what is most important is that this needs to be regularly maintained so that relining can be done 
to compensate for the resorption of the alveolar ridge. Thank you. There is a lot of attention in the real-time chat in Daniel's site. I think because it's our third anniversary, there are lots of words of encouragement. Let's take a look. Smile again. Congratulations on the third anniversary of Prosodontics on Friday. I look forward to more meaningful Prosodontics lecture. Wise Dental Life. Greetings, Professor Jo Yunu, Professor Lee Jun Sok. I plan to watch the program live today. Congratulations on the third anniversary. Perhaps so we can give this person a coffee coupon because he called out both Professor Lee Jun Sok and me. ID Dorami, I'm here today as well. Congratulations on the Prosodontics on Friday Night Live third anniversary. Full denture is very difficult, says someone. Light, it's already been three years. I was quite slow to learn about this great content, but I'll continue to learn hard utilizing it. I am ready to study today. Perhaps we can send this person coffee coupon as well. That would be very appreciated. T.S. Congratulations on third anniversary. I've learned a lot and will continue to do so. D.L.K. Nice to meet you, Professor Lee Jun. So I think this person knows you, Professor Lee. So we'll entertain the questions after the lecture is over. Duchi Duchi, I've watched the program where you appeared previously. I'm glad to see you again. I look forward to today's lecture. Perhaps we can send this person coffee coupon as well. That would be greatly appreciated. Enlarge 77, I'll focus hard. Captain Americano, this person has asked a lot of questions in the previous lecture as well. We'll entertain the rest of the comments and questions after Professor Lee Jun Seok's lecture. There are many words of encouragement congratulating us of the third anniversary. Thank you very much. As mentioned, the Q&A session will be addressed after Professor Lee's lecture. Professor Lee, please carry on. So let's look at the cause of discomfort and ways to address them. By discomfort, there can be many different types of complaints and discomfort, but the most frequently mentioned discomfort is pain and that the denture is loose. If you look at the different factors, first it can be attributed to the fact that the case was difficult from the first place. As shown, there can be various factors that constitute a difficult case. There can be lack of residual bone, thin mucosa, and so forth. But we can treat these kind of patients when we overcome these limitations. And if we provide a solution that solves it, we can provide treatment. However, if we are unable to address them, then problems can occur. If we are unable to address them, the denture that is fabricated based on that can be very difficult to adjust. I hope you take a look at the patient factors. For instance, if there is a lack or insufficient amount of saliva because there is no lubricant, there can be pain and it can be loose. There can be other factors too. You'll be able to get a good sense as to why pain occurs and why the denture feels loose. When we fabricate the denture, there can be a bit of error or there can be different kinds of mistakes during the procedure. 
that were unnoticed. Because of these factors, the discomforts may occur. If you divide the discomforts based on the position of the denture, it can be divided into impression surface, polished surface, and occlusal surface. We've talked about posterior palatal seal, and this can lead to looseness of denture rather than pain. Imbalance so with a neutral zone or imbalance with adjacent muscles can lead to looseness of denture as well. Apart from the factors listed here, if the cause lies on denture, the characteristic is that the pain and looseness can occur at the same time. When there is pain, you need to know what is the cause. If there is looseness, you need to check what is the cause thoroughly. After adjustment, the patient can come back and say that there is pain. On the first day, we have looked at the inner surface, the retention of inner surface, and occlusal adjustment. Because we did adjustment on inner surface first, if that has not changed, then problems may have emerged because of occlusal issues. Looking at alveolar crest, this is the facet of alveolar crest. If there is ulcer, Rather than it being traumatic ulcer, it can be the result of disruption of stability due to lateral force or strong occlusal force. If you look at the denture image in the middle, you can see a lot of dots being marked as excursion occurs. If you adjust that, as shown on the right, ulcer will disappear. If you have done inner surface adjustment in this case, then also it would have occurred in a different area and the patient would have returned again. So in marginal area, there can be ulcer as well. In order to increase the sealing effect in hemorrhage notch, distal buccal flange can be overextended. You can use a fit checker as shown in the middle. You can mark the overextended area like this using indelible pencil. If you adjust it, the image on the right is after one adjustment. You need to check whether the patient continues to feel discomfort or not. And you can do it once again. When the patient experiences pain, you need to tell the patient that we need to take things gradually because doing things significantly at once can lead to more error. We need to do it in two steps or three steps. The patient doesn't want the denture to be loose, so in most cases they accept. When the patient complains of pain, you need to look at the defect within the denture or you need to look at the beating of the posterior palatal seal. There can be pain because of excessive force applied and you can alleviate it or remove it. Next, there can be tongue or cheek biting. In this case, this is because Horizontal overlap has not been secured. As shown on left, if teeth alignment are in close contact, you need to adjust the buccal facet of the occlusal surface of the upper as well as the buccal surface of the lower. As shown on the image on the right, by securing horizontal overlap, we can address a cheek biting. There can be cheek biting in other instances as well. If the tuberosity is much lower and when we provide a denture on the distal side, it can be difficult to provide clearance. In this case, there can be cheek biting as well. You need to adjust the thickness appropriately to secure space. Conversely, they can be tongue biting as well. 
This is the opposite of cheek biting, as shown by lowering the lingual cusp of the lower. We can secure horizontal overlap. If that does not solve the issue, we need to reduce the palatal surface of the upper posterior area to improve tongue biting. Next case is about a shock that the patient feels upon mastication, almost like an electric shock, the patients say. And this kind of symptoms are experienced by people with a severely resorbed alveolar ridge. If it has not been long since you've provided a denture, if alveolar bone resorption occurs significantly, the mental nerve opening moves towards the alveolar crest, leading to these kind of problems. If the denture has been made nicely and if stability has been secured, you need to check when the patient feels a shock, at which point when pressed. You need to mark using vernisher and then you also need to use indelible pencil to mark it on the inner surface of the denture and make adjustments. If the patient has been using denture for a long time, and if the patient has severely resorbed the alveolar ridge, perhaps because of imbalance between occlusion and stability, this kind of uh, symptoms may occur as denture moves. Before prepping inner surface, so you need to secure stability of denture that has been used for long term. And after that, you need to adjust areas where it's in contact. At times, people complain of a pain in the throat when they swallow. At times, in the retromyelohyoid space, traumatic ulcers can be observed. If you can dry it nicely, you can use indelible pencil or tembon GOE to check that area and make adjustments. If you cannot do moisture control and if indelible pencil cannot be used, you need to use a fit checker to see where there is excessive contact and make adjustments. Let me summarize. We make a lot of effort to make a full denture. We take impression to make a nice impression surface. And in order to get stability from polished surface, we need to align teeth nicely. And as a result, we can get retention and stability. The key in occlusion is that even if we have gained retention and stability from polished surface and impression surface, if occlusion is done wrong, then retention and stability will be reduced. For successful full denture treatment, stabilization of occlusion is crucial. As mentioned earlier, the cause may be the same, but symptoms may vary. If retention is lacking, for instance, if there is lack of retention in the lower, perioral muscle action becomes increased and the denture becomes loosened. On the other hand, as for the upper where there is retention, if a perioral muscle comes into the play and if there is overextension, this will not dislodge the denture, but this will lead to ulcerations. We need to have such understanding so that if patient comes in complaining about something, we need to look for the root cause and address it. This is what I've prepared thus far. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for the meaningful and wonderful lecture. Let's take a look at the real-time chat on the dental site and let us begin the Q&A session.
Let's look at the questions. Timo, how often should I replace denture? I'm curious. Replacement cycle. In the case of uh, insured denture, you can provide a prosthesis every seven years. I don't think there is a separately set replacement cycle. If despite continuous maintenance and care, if there is a discomfort that cannot be resolved, and if fabricating a new one would solve that problem, then that might be the time for replacing the denture. There can be differences depending on patient, and there can be differences such as level of bone loss. So it's difficult to pinpoint when, but on average, after five years, you may start to consider about replacement, and that is why the insurance policy says seven years. Many factors may have been considered in making that decision, considering the finances and stuff. Next question. Rarigi, what if there is disability that makes working side, non-working side, and anterior movement impossible? What do you think this person means by impossible? If it is impossible, then you need to fabricate new denture. I think this person is talking about old denture. Zero three mania. Should we always prep the lateral occlusion and denture? Should it always be prepped by lateral occlusion? In full denture, by lateral occlusion, this means uh, lateral force on unilateral side. Depending on the level of retention and stability, some articles say if uh, retention is good, anterior guidance is okay. Rather than removing it all the time, if the ridge can handle it, you do not need to remove everything, but if it is otherwise and affects stability, then it's better to remove it. Wani, following the posterior border line, I have fabricated metal denture base. And if the patient has a severe nausea, how can I respond to it? Or if the patient has a severe nausea and vomiting response, what can I do in the fabrication process? Vomit and nausea. There can be patients with a severe nausea response. This can be due to psychological factors. If it is because of that, this can be resolved easily if it is attributable to a different cause. In finding the posterior border line, if there is no retention in the upper denture and if it shifts, if the patients with severe nausea have lack of retention, as it shifts, nausea can be stimulated, and if there is a unilateral mastication, shifting can occur and nausea can be stimulated again. If you have set to vertical dimension high, a sense of nausea can be stimulated as well in some articles. You need to check these factors, in my opinion. Based on my experience, a patients with a severe nausea and uh, vomiting symptoms to the point where they cannot use dentures, I've seen about uh, three or four such patients. And uh, starting from taking alginate impression, they start to show nausea. In that case, I will place a couple of implants and do an open palate denture. I may use locator and such and provide open palate denture. P 
patients who were more financially available placed implants and used a fixed bridge as well. Ways to respond to such patients can be many. If the patient needs to have denture, it can become more difficult. As mentioned, patients with nausea and vomit, it's very difficult to take a final impression. Taking functional impression using tissue conditioner will not be able to address everything and it's not easy. It can be very difficult. Larry Gee. Inclined surface on both sides can be prepped to the point where cusp tip is not lowered. However, if cusp tip needs to be lowered, should adjustments be made while preserving either upper or the lower? When doing a cusp tip reduction, do you do upper or lower? I think that's the gist of the question. I preserve the upper and normally adjust the lower. Intraoral adjustment, this is to make a fully balanced occlusion on both sides. Doing this is very difficult, as mentioned at school. When we talk about palatal cusp, we talk about mortar and pestle. The lower becomes mortar and the upper becomes pestle. The way to do artificial teeth alignment in the upper, you can utilize lingualized occlusion. Bilingualized, the lingual cusp of the upper should all be in contact. Importance lies in the upper. Coffee addict, I have a question. In the textbook, in the case of upper and lower full denture from the CR position, the anterior region should not be in contact. However, clinically speaking, there needs to be light contact in the anterior region for the patient to really get a sense of stability. What's your opinion on that? Practically speaking, both are quite right. We do not protrude chin at CO, but after closing anterior region, we go to CO. The patient feels more stability when there's light contact. However, in the case of upper, for full denture cases, if there is contact in the anterior area, wear occurs first in the posterior area and the anterior area's contact becomes stronger. So you need to consider that as you make adjustment and you need to leave a little bit of space. If there is a lot of contact in the anterior region, flabby tissue can result and it can negatively affect retention and stability. And you need to consider that. If you feel like there needs to be contact in the anterior area, you need to have the patient come in regularly to do evaluations. You need to check if there is a lot of wear or excessive force concentrated in the anterior area. These need to be evaluated. Why is it bad if we just do a closal adjustment just for preventive purpose rather than anticipating the result of treatment result? Or to try to find all problem solutions in occlusion and occlusal adjustments? Solution to all problems in occlusal adjustments. I don't think there is downside. I'm not sure whether I understand the question accurately. The forces that are generated in our oral cavity are caused by occlusion. The forces applied are from occlusion. If there is some damage or pain, I look at occlusion primarily. Yes, because the patient has the denture and because of occlusion, there may be pain in the alveolar crest or there can be ulcerations or sore spots. In a lot of cases, the cause lies in occlusion. If the cause is not 
related to occlusion, if there is overextension, you'll be able to notice the flabby tissue very easily. The problems that occur as the patient uses denture mostly involves occlusion, especially when the patient has not been using it for that long. So when the patient comes for a recall check, I think we always need to check occlusion, yes. Ace. In the case of skeletal class 3 patient, is there a tip to do artificial teeth alignment in the upper and lower better? I think this person is asking about class 3 patient. A tip to do artificial teeth alignment more stably. I think this person is talking about crossbite or edge to edge. In the case of skeletal class 3 patient, there is no tip to provide solutions more stably. In the case of skeletal class 3 patient, even if the ridge in the upper is good, there is continuous tendency to dislodge the denture and that's a problem. So we need to check that. Edge to edge bite is normally recommended. However, that still does not assure the stability or retention. So in the case of a skeletal class 3 patient, I would rather implant the fixed over denture or those kind of solutions. Shin295577, I'm currently using denture and I think this is of great help. I'll focus. I think this is a patient. Captain Americano, the patient continues to complain that it's difficult to chew on both sides at the same time, so the patient chews with anterior teeth or just on one side, leading to denture dislodgement. What should I do? The recommendation is for the patient to chew on both sides, but I don't think that many patients use both sides when they chew. When they chew on one side, the dislodgement can occur, and this has been mentioned previously, by making the buccal side more thick and increasing contact surface, based on Stefan's principle, by increasing contact surface, we can get retention, and you can utilize the lateral muscle force. If you can use that to solve the problem, then it's good, but if it's not resolved, that person should receive implanted treatment, be it over denture or fixed prosthesis. On the other side, if there's lateral occlusion or if there's discomfort when the patient chews, if it's uncomfortable, they don't use that side. They use the side where it's more comfortable. So you need to check occlusion first. If occlusion is normal and if such problems occur, then as Professor Lee has mentioned, you need to check stability and retention as well. Shin295577, how often do I replace denture? This has already been mentioned. Larigi, when the patient is sitting straight, how can I check whether there is a fremitus in occlusion? I think this person is asking about sliding centric. In my case, in the case of denture, I put my hand on it and I try to get a tactile sense of the denture movement in the case of natural tooth and the crown bridge. I put my hand on the buccal surface of the tooth or on the labial side and try to get the feel of it. The amount that is transferred, for instance, if it is natural tooth, there should be no sense if it is bridge. The shifting sense should not be delivered to my hand. Occlusal adjustment should be done up to that point. He 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 with time, stronger occlusal contact points are made on the premolar rather than molar. Does this mean that the CR guidance has failed? 
I'm unsure. With time, if it changes like that, I don't think this means failure and see our guidance. With time, vertical dimension changes and CR position will change as well. In the case of lower, the lower can protrude out but it doesn't protrude. At a certain point, once you check, CR and CO can differ significantly. And this can happen quite a lot. This does not mean that the CR guidance has failed, but this can happen when the patient changes. And when I was doing a research at school, I did a photoelastic test. By doing this, occlusal force is delivered towards the front. We looked at where the strongest occlusal force was applied. It was concentrated on premolar rather than molar. In other words, occlusal force is quite concentrated on the premolar area rather than molar area. With time, after having used denture for a certain period, when you look at patients with sore spots, they're often in the premolar area. In other words, the causal force is concentrated in the premolar area. Because of the mechanism, perhaps in the beginning it may have been the molar area, but I think it is natural that it moves towards the premolar area. You just need to do a causal adjustment again and check. Larigi, clinically speaking, after positioning restoration or prosthesis, the occlusal adjustment that occurred thereafter can lead to serious and complex issues. After position, occlusal adjustments after prosthesis are delivered. We make occlusal adjustments to improve things. I don't think it's going to lead to major problems. By occlusal adjustment, in the case of natural tooth, I think you need to do it sufficiently. For instance, if it is a zirconia crown in the lower and a natural tooth or a gold crown in the upper with continued use, the occlusion becomes much closer and this can lead to problems. Occlusal adjustment needs to be done on the prosthesis so that the surface contact does not become too extreme. You need to reduce the contact surface little by little to help the tooth and reducing mobility of the tooth with mobility is to remove secondary TF. So I don't think this will lead to major problems. I agree. Occlusion needs to be checked at all times and occlusal adjustments need to be done every possible time. That is very good. Bingo. Is there a separate indication so for using locator type, magnetic type, bar type, implanted denture? This does not necessarily fall into the topic of the day. I don't think there are separate indications, but there can be cases where different options can be more favorable. There is no defined uh, principle as to what should not be applied when. But in the case of overdenture, various options can be used and you have to look at the patient condition and rich condition and choose appropriate options. You need to look at the vertical available space and other options. There's going to be a lecture on overdenture, so I hope we can address this question in that lecture. If you can raise this question again, we'll provide a more detailed answer. How can I limit occlusal force to the point to where periodontal tissue can manage? I think this is an unfit question because after extraction, there is no periodontal tissue. I think if this question falls under natural tooth or bridge. Shin 295577, I think this person is a patient. Is the price of full denture and partial denture the same? 
Full denture, metal denture base, and partial denture costs are the same. That's my understanding. Based on my understanding, the insurance price of partial denture is slightly higher. I'm not sure whether I remember right, but yes. Herimguak, I heard that it's okay to clean a denture with a kitchen detergent. Is it correct? Is there any precautions that I should take? It is better to use a kitchen detergent rather than toothpaste because there is less wear. You need to clean it properly. Can a denture be insured? Yes, dentures can be insured. For those who are 65 or older, yes, for 65 and older. Is there a guidance or a principle to refabricate a denture due to alveolar bone resorption? Denture refabrication upon alveolar bone resorption. How much alveolar bone resorption would require new denture fabrication? I think this is the question. I think that it may differ based on the case. If you can fix the denture, then that is the best, but with alveolar bone resorption or because of age, systemic health, alveolar bone condition, there may be such a necessity. With patients with significant alveolar bone resorption, actually, it is better to fix the existing denture than fabricating new denture in terms of adaptation. There are various factors that we need to consider. Relining. If the patient is too old, then it is better to use existing denture. In terms of denture refabrication, if it is too loose and if the patient is not too old, if it is rickety, then we need to provide the refabrication. If relining cannot solve the problem, we need to fabricate it once again. Then T says, these days, denture adhesives are recommended frequently. Please tell me advantages and disadvantages of using denture adhesives. I'm unsure as to whether this is recommended a lot. The reason why denture adhesive is not recommended is because if the denture is loose, people just use adhesive rather than doing regular checkup. In that case, then delivering proper denture may become impossible. I do not necessarily recommend a denture adhesive. But if you do regular checkup, and if you use it when necessary, then it will be okay. If you do not abuse it, then it's going to be okay. The denture adhesive itself is not bad, but the patient needs to clean the denture before using it, but in general, they don't do it, so the denture becomes contaminated. So that's why I think it's not really ideal for oral cavity. In my opinion, when you use denture adhesive, as you have mentioned, you need to get regular checkups from dental clinics and then use it. Despite the well-made denture, at times, it, when it becomes impossible, you may use a denture adhesive. Yes. Nate? In the upper, there's partial denture, and in the lower, there's fixed prosthesis, and on the left side only, there's an odd noise. By smacking sound, I think the denture continues to get attached and detached. Or perhaps it's because of tongue and cheek. We need to think of these two possibilities. 
And when there's an odd noise coming out, whenever there's mastication, you need to check and take a look at the denture. I do not have uh, much clinical experience on this end. The odd noise. This may occur depending on food type. And it can be affected by the surrounding muscle as well. When we close it open, there can be a sound and we need to understand when the sound comes out. If the sound comes out, if it's loose upon mastication, it's possible. But I have not seen it myself, so it's difficult to say. If there is a significant difference between CR and MIP to the point where it's unacceptable, what should I do? I think Larigi has a lot of questions as to when things go extreme. Significant difference between CR and MIP. If it's unacceptable, I think this person is talking about the amount. If the patient's MIP is not a problem, it's not going to occur more problems. The patient to choose in CR and at times to choose towards the forward, MIP is towards the forward and CR if it is towards the posterior, as the patient to choose. At times it feels correct, but at times mastication may not really feel okay so the patient may complain in that case you need to establish such relation again escaping heat when adapting for the first time what kind of food do you recommend do you train patients to chew both sides in my case when we practice we say you should start off with softer food Yes, we do provide patient training, but I do not really say that you have to chew both sides. At times, you have to chew on both sides, and in those cases, I tell my patients to do that. More so than using both sides to chew, people use right side and left side in turn as they chew. It's difficult to use both sides at the same time. In general, people chew on their preferred side. And that area becomes more developed when we tell our patients, because it's difficult to chew in the beginning, we tell the patient to start off with the fluids. From there, you can move on to soft rice, eggs, and tofu. And after the patient gets accustomed to that, they can try kimchi and other side dishes. Some patients complain of not being able to chew kimchi, but kimchi is something that is difficult to chew amongst the Korean food because it has a lot of fiber. We need to train our patients properly. Eating kimchi from the start may not be easy. Captain Americano, with age, people's mouth becomes smaller and at the times it becomes too much to put the denture in. Should I have the patient practice open mouth? Yes. I don't think I'm understanding accurately. There are patients who are having difficulty opening and closing mouth. In that case, practicing is good. Or, despite atrophic ridge, when the patient goes in, the patient complains of pain in certain cases. But they actually do not complain of pain when they do it themselves. I think this person is asking that after tooth extraction, it becomes a dentulous ridge and the overall oral cavity becomes reduced. So at times, it's difficult to put in the denture. In the beginning, maybe the patient may be hesitant, but with continued use, there will be no major discomforts. In the case of patients with involuntary lower movement, how can I form occlusion? Should I align teeth with zero degrees first? 
So I think the patient shakes and has involuntary movement. In such cases, depending on different cases, at times it may be difficult to treat. Even if you use zero degree teeth alignment, you cannot assure 100% success. There needs to be good occlusion in all changed states, and if there is wandering bite, you need to get it all right on both sides. Full bilateral balanced occlusion needs to be achieved. The patients with involuntary movement may be quite difficult. Zero 03 mania. In cases where torus is developed, do you also actively pursue surgical procedures as well? In the case there is a torus, unless the patient experiences discomfort and is unable to set denture, I don't do surgical approach. If it's too significant, you need to remove it. If it does not interfere with the retention, then it's okay if we just leave it. Captain Americano, we cannot tell the patient not to eat kimchi. There are many elderly patients who say they want to eat kimchi. How can I train patients about food? We need to tell the patient that we cannot eat kimchi from the start. You need to dice the radish kimchi if you want to eat it. Korean food includes different vegetables and steamed vegetables. They're not like lettuce, which only requires a couple of times of chopping. And we eat steamed spinach and different vegetables, and they're in the form of stem and stalks. So I tell the patients to cut it and eat it. 92. As for the upper denture, is there a criteria where you choose pure resin casting metal mesh type? I think this person is talking about metal crown. Is there a criteria about choosing a casting metal type if you're concerned about fracture or if the patient has been using metal base from the past, then you need to continue on with that trend. Those should be considered, and in the case of flabby tissue patients, when I am to fabricate the denture for them, I am going to use a resin base. Can do if the patient continues to use denture for long term and has used the left side of the mandible primarily for chewing. When fabricating new denture in wax frame, although I continue to tell the patient to bite the CR, the patient bites on the left side. How can I approach it? Because of time constraint, we will not be able to answer in detail. In the case of such patients, you can utilize a treatment denture and using that, you need to check whether you can restore occlusion. I agree. Can I clean a denture with a vinegar? No. Can do, Professor Lee jun Yeah, I love your mustache. Judging by the fact that this person is saying that you look different, this person has watched your previous lecture. I love the lecture today. It's very different from existing denture. Thank you. From private practitioner's perspective, it's very difficult to pay deep attention every time. How much do you charge for denture treatment? <laughs> so if it's insured, it's going to be the same. For general patients who cannot be insured, for dental hospitals, it's different from private practice. In the case of Sejong Hospital, how much is it? It is about 2 million won per arch. It's slightly over 2 million won. Thanks to two professors, I feel denture less daunting. Caramel, after a certain period since denture fabrication in artificial teeth and 
pink resin on the gingival side, there's discoloration. I don't know why this occurs and how can I prevent it? The patient originally had upper and lower denture and I did upper denture again with time. Existing lower denture still is clean, but my upper denture has discolored. In this case, between artificial teeth and denture base, a wax wash and these kind of procedures may have not been done properly. There can be a little bit of gap and, and this may have led to discoloration. Because of physical property and temperature, you need to consider these as well. If teeth and resin base do not really go well, problems may occur. There are different options available in terms of artificial teeth. There's just general resin and composite resin, and I think these kind of differences have led to this result. If you use just general resin, more discoloration may occur. When choosing artificial teeth, maybe you need to pay more attention. Light. For reasons such as retention and adaptation, if I tell the patient to keep the denture on for the night for maximal effect, will that help? Keeping the denture on for retention issue. So I assume this is at the very beginning at denture delivery. Is this person asking about the very first time? Retention issue. I'm not sure whether this is going to be really effective. Captain Americano, if the denture is loose, so do you use direct method for relining or do you use indirect method? In your case, Professor, do you use direct method? Rather than direct method, when I do indirect method, the results seem to be much better. Understood. Tentesis, congratulations on the third anniversary of Prosoentics on Friday. I look forward to celebrating the 30th anniversary. Professor Lee, you need to be with us until the 30th anniversary. Red Cherry 1, when adjusting the inner surface of denture, is there a major difference in terms of uh, soft and hard reliner indications? Personally, soft type reliner includes silicone type as well as PMMA and PMA. If you are to do relining, it is better to use a hard reliner. Soft reliners cannot be used for long because it can be changed. Although silicone type has elasticity, I think it's difficult to say that it's good for relining. Captain Americano, do you prescribe artificial saliva for patients with lack of saliva? Artificial saliva. It can be of help. More so than insufficiency, many patients have difficulty in saliva secretion. In such patients, they like it much more. Chamfrey, is there a criteria for choosing artificial teeth like Endura upon denture fabrication? There are different guidelines from manufacturers. I think this is difficult to address in today's lecture. So it's not natural if there's a tongue biting. Nice to meet you. I've provided a full denture for a patient with dementia. The patient continues to complain of denture dislodgement. And when I check, the occlusion and retention is good. When I talk with the guardian, the person likes to eat lettuce wrapped rice balls and tend to chew with the front teeth. Although I tell the patient to chew with molars after occlusal adjustment in the anterior region because of dementia, the patient continues to eat with front teeth. In this case, because training is impossible, what if I give up aesthetics in the anterior region and prep the anterior region significantly? Prepping so that it's not in contact at all? I think that's what this person means. For dementia patients, it's difficult to answer. We are going over the designated time, but there are still way too many questions left.
Hedim Guag, if there is tongue biting, will situation improve on its own or do I need to ask for after service? The tongue may get accustomed to it. At times, it can resolve or it may not, but you need to make adjustments. You need to do continuous recall. For denture maintenance, this question is odd. TS, when I check the inner surface using fit checker, is there a tip so that I can avoid pressure apart from adjusting the upper palatal side or pressure from the lower? Is there any other tips? When you use fit checker for the upper, Think of it as using impression material in a very customized individual tray. It's like the impression material. If you do not punch a hole, it goes in less. The upper, it's slightly difficult. As for the lower, if you apply appropriate amount of force and hold it, these can be addressed. Today, we have so many questions. There are way many questions left, but we will not be able to answer all these questions. And I think that Professor Lee Jun Sok will have to come again for another lecture to address all these questions. I really apologize for not being able to answer them all. As for the unanswered questions, Professor Lee Jun Sok will reach out separately. Yes. There are great questions below, but I really apologize because of time constraint. We have already passed our designated time, so we need to end the Q&A session. Professor Lee Jun Sok, could you choose the three best questions raised? Pick the best three questions and if there are any meaningful questions that have been raised which were unaddressed during the lecture, we will think of other ways to make up for it. Can you choose the three best questions? Today we've had so many questions, yes. It's very difficult to say. Captain Americano. Larry has raised a lot of difficult questions as well. And Wani. Wanhui? Wani. Wani. Congratulations, Captain Americano, Larry Gi, and Wani. Congratulations to you all. Those of you selected as best questions will receive chicken coupons on Monday. Don't feel too let down for not being selected as the best question. Among those who have raised questions in the real chat, there will be a lucky draw and Starbucks coffee coupons will be sent. Prasa and Texan Friday's third anniversary event will continue on in the next lecture as well. I look forward to your keen interest. Professor Lee Jun Sok, today we've had a lot of questions and a lot of time has passed, but it feels good because a lot of questions mean a lot of interest. Could you give a word of advice to your peers who are studying hard on a full denture watching Prosontics on Friday? I see a lot of full denture patients at University Hospital, but there are many cases that I find difficult. Practically speaking, it's impossible to solve every single case. And there are cases that I was unable to solve. As was asked, if you continue to make effort to find the root cause of problems in different cases, you'll be able to improve yourself. Although I may not be able to solve everything when the patient comes in the next time after treatment, at least 
such symptoms would have been alleviated, and as long as it does not recur, you can build a good relation with your patients. We need to figure out the root cause so that the patient leaves in a better state than when he or she originally first came in. To do this, you need to listen to a lot of lectures, read a lot of journals, gain a lot of clinical experience, and then ultimately you'll become excellent dentists. Despite your busy schedule, I'm honored to have you here again. This is your third time on Prosthodontics on Friday. Dear viewers of Prosthodontics on Friday, how did you like the Prosthodontics on Friday seminar with Professor Lee Jun so we were able to understand full denture adaptation, adjustment, and patient management? I think this was very important considering the amount of questions, and I think you were able to get meaningful tips this Friday, and the questions unanswered today will be responded via reply. In the next lecture, Professor Park Chung-jin of Gangneung Wonju University is going to talk about how to respond to denture complications in full denture cases. Thank you for staying up with us until late. Thank you. Professor Lee, you have done such a great work.